Let's talk about your Unibet champion hurdlers um, kicking off with Epitonte. Um, you said she sort of just quietly slipped under the radar at the start of the season, but she, she came, finished it with a real bang. Um, how has she been over the last few months? Well, I think she's been great. I mean, I think you actually go back to the previous year when I thought she'd win the Mayor's Novice Hurdle. Um, and she was very disappointing. Um, so we consequently came in off quite a rather attractive mark. We ran her in the Jerry Field, which she absolutely smashed to pieces. And JP was very brave here. He said, right, well, what are we going to do now? With the handicapper had his full say-so um, and didn't make handicaps look a very attractive you know, halfway house sort of thing. You know, you're, you're very high in a handicap. You've got a long way to go to be a... And he said, come on, let's, if, if, you're, if you're happy, we'll go straight to the Christmas hurdle. Um, especially knowing that by which time Bouvardier had had his um, injury in the fighting fifth. Um, and he said, well, let's, if you think Epitons up to this sort of thing. Well, she was more than up to it. She was fantastically impressive. And consequently, you know, that we'd gone straight from 130 something um, in an intermediate handicap to a grade one. I consequently went straight to the champion hurdle. Um, and, you know, she was, the, she was the best on the day. She's probably the best. She was the best hurdler around last year, two mile hurdler. I mean, there's not much of her, but she, she's clearly all heart and, and all ability, isn't she? She's great. She's like, like all those really good hurdlers. She's very slick, she's very quick, she's pace. Um, she's lovely. She's a, she's, a, she's a pleasure, to be honest. She's sweet filly, but as I say, she's not the biggest in the world, but, and, you, and you're not going to make a chaser out of her, so she better get on and win three champion hurdles, I suppose. So the same sort of tried and tested route, fighting fifth, Christmas hurdle? She would, yeah, I would have thought so, because Bouvardet comes into the equation. Now, he's a fair bit behind and wouldn't be ready for the fighting fifth anyway. Um, I'm not even saying he would be ready for the Christmas hurdle, but we're, we're going well. We're very pleased with how things are going. Um, they did a lot of work with him at Martinstown um, and got him going. As you know, it was a, it was a bizarre but horrible injury where the, this piece of wood literally got embedded underneath the hoof. And I'm sure some people saw the picture where there was another, this, half the hurdle was underneath the hoof, the other half was sticking out at that angle. That's obviously when it put the foot down, that broke off. But there was one amazing picture with where you saw this chunk of wood appearing out of the top of the coronet band. Um, it was an extraordinary feat of, well, of, of surgery to remove every particle. And there were thousands of them because you get a piece of wood that size right down. It was that thick, it was a great wadge of hurdle underneath the hoof. So they had to open the front of the hoof. So there was a gap that wide the whole way down the wall of the front of the hoof, straight in. Yeah. So that has to grow over. Um, but what they had to do is get in there and get every particle out, because if you started to put it back together with any one little piece still in there, that would eventually get infected and bingo, and you'd be, the consequences would be unbearable. It, it, it almost certainly wouldn't survive. Um, and so that went well. Then you, she went back to, to Martinstown. Um, Joe Kelly and his team, the veterinary team over there, took over from Dave Matheson, our team here that had operated on him. The hoof was encouraged to grow and the coronet band is, is the hardest thing. And, and the sort of damage to the, to the lower foot because it was, had been unsupported. So the sole is quite vulnerable in that it's sort of dropped a fair bit. But um, again, the sort of magic of science and great, we're into the farriers now, we've got their job to do, and that's a big job. But we're going well. She only goes out on the grass. You wouldn't want to go in sand or anything like that. Um, and we're working away, and we're cantering away quite nicely. Hannah that has ridden him every day of every year, 
she knows him backwards. She's very, very happy with him at the moment and touched a wood long may it last. I mean, we've got a long way to go. Uh, he won't be ready for the, whatever happens, he won't be ready for the fighting fifth. So that is where Epitant will aim to begin. Um, then we'll have to see what happens come Christmas. Um, would something like the, the Unibet International be a, a possibility at Cheltenham? It would be. It, 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 uh, the Unibet International is... Um, <laughs> I don't know whether Bouba Dare would be ready for that. I think he'll even struggle for Christmas, possibly, in which case Epitant would come Christmas or could go international. The only thing you can't do is international and Christmas. So, um, you know, if possible, if we thought Bouba Dare was going to get back for... Christmas, then Epitant can go Unibet International. Not a bad problem to have, I suppose, though, is it? I like it. Um, you know, you, you need spares. I mean, it's rather like it's nice to think you've got two Gold Cup horses. It's nice to think we've got two Champion Hurdle horses. Um, but you know as well as I do, getting them there is everything. Uh, you get one there, you've done well. You know, I'm a pessimist, yes, but we all know what can come and bite you rather like it did with, with Altior last year and, uh, and every year. Something crops up that will you know, destroy you, but um, you have to live with it and march on. And, and, and you've got to try and you do everything to keep these things out of trouble, keep horses out of trouble and injury-free. But you, you wouldn't know, like Bouvardet's injury was beyond freak it's you know it just shows you they can do anything i suppose nicky it's a bit of a repeat from see you then with, with bubo dan the fact that you sort of might just try and need to get one run into him before aiming to win another unibet champion i'd be perfectly happy if, it, if that's all it came down to yeah i mean this we've always used that international uh, no it's not the contenders hurdle at uh, sandown it's a pretty um bizarre contest it's worth nothing but it's, the timing is very good. Yeah. Um, soft ground at Sandown doesn't worry um, Bubba there. So, I mean, if that was the only race he had, that wouldn't worry me. And what is it about you and Unibet Champion Hurdles? Why, why, do you, why are you the most successful trainer in that race? Well, it, it, it's, it's only because I've been lucky enough to have some very good horses that happen to suit, be very good two-mile hurdlers. See you then was obviously exceptional we were very lucky to have him early in our sort of you know when i hadn't been going that long um so you're very lucky to have something like him at that time uh since then again you've just been lucky good horses have come along um binoculars and particularly with jp you know we've had i mean my center yours i always think was the unluckiest horse he's second three in three champion hurdles and didn't win one he was as good as any of them mm. um um, but Binocular was special and Bouvardet has been very special as well and then Epitant comes along as well. And I think it, it, it only shows the, and I said it, that, you know, from, with JP's sort of system and, and how it works and how his team works and that, that it includes the team that are out there buying the horses and having to find the raw material that we're lucky enough to get. Um, it's quite something when you think that he'd won the champion hurdle the year before with um, Esther Dallin, yeah. And he sadly had had a fatal accident. Um, so that was the reigning champion was out. Bouverdere, who'd fallen in that champion hurdle, um, yet he still won it because he had a spare in there as well. Then Bouverdere is out, so he's got his best two hurdlers out, and he's still got another one, <laughs> Epitont. So... You know, there's a, there's a lot to say that there's, there's a, a lot of the success is, is, is in, in plans and policies and buying that you can, you know, at any one time you can have, you've got three sat there that can represent, you know, that can, anyway, go around in green and gold and bring back the gold. And two horses who fit into pretty much the same bracket really are um, Buzz and, and Glyn who were both smart novices again last season. Um, Glyn's a, a, a beautiful looking looking horse. What, what, what have you got in mind for those well, two? Well we don't know about, don't know much about him really. We only ran him once. Um, On a Doncaster. Yeah, he didn't run again after that. Did no, because I know, I know you, were, right. so you were hoping to 
perhaps take them to Aintree, but again, yeah. that, that didn't happen. But it sort of just didn't take Doncaster very well. And his work didn't sort of match it up. And I was just waiting for him. And as I say, he wasn't going to go to Cheltenham. He'd only had one run. He was very impressive. Um, and yeah, Aintree would have been what we were waiting for. And of course, there wasn't one. So he's only had one run. I wouldn't want to be going chasing with him with one run under his belt. He had run a point to point, yes. But I think we ought to be looking at those introductory hurdles and things like that. I mean, they're made for him. So um, I, I would think we'd just go quietly down that route to start with. And a quick line on Buzz. I know you stepped up in grade at Kempton um, in the Dove Cut. Yeah. Well, I think he'd been going quite a long time. He'd been running all summer on the flat and went straight into over hurdles. And I just think he'd probably done enough at the time. He's had a good summer break. And um, we'll see how we go from there. For Essa, I would think she's going well. She worked this morning. Um, she's in good form. Um, she was very good. I mean, she did nothing wrong, really, until the, until the end. But um, I'd say she'd probably stay over hurdles. We'd probably go to Weatherby, I would think. Um, for that mare's there, the two miles. She'd probably get a little bit further if wanted. Um, she's the other filly that you've probably got on there that um, unfortunately her, we had to stop her rather mm. earlier. She didn't make Cheltenham and I thought she would have been one of our best was Marie's Thanks. Rock. Um, she had a small chip um, which had to be bended and um, she is just having her soft palate cauterised. She probably won't get to weather being time to, so for the rest we'll go there and we'll reroute Marie's Rock somewhere else. She's a very good filly, I think. Where are I with um, Apple Shakira? Um, well, we've always been with Apple Shakira, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, she's not the easiest. Um, I mean, she's great in herself. She's very settled and relaxed at the moment. She's doing a lot of cantering. She's been, she's had niggly injuries all the way along. I mean, you know, underneath it all, she's not she's not a Naples jade, but she's she's talented. Um, you've got to channel it the right way. She she tends to use up quite a lot of energy in, you know, she just she's always on the go a bit. But she's very good at the moment. Um, what, any any sort of is it just a case of taking it day by day? I think, with her I think you... she's a find the right get, get her just get her on an even keel. We're going well. And we couldn't talk to you, Nikki, without mentioning that. Top class mare, Verdana Blue. Uh, how you see, she was sort of kept busy enough during the summer. Well, yeah, but she had a very unlucky summer. Um, Ascot was the first objective. Um, obviously, she, no champion hurdle, no spring hurdling, which she loves because the ground gets nice and quick. Um, so we said, right, we'll go flat racing. Went off, we go to Ascot, 10 mils of rain the night before. And that obviously took the ground away from her completely. She ran a fantastic race. She just got caught in the last. Ranmore did absolutely everything right. He got there. Nicker said, get there late. And do you know what I mean? Day, he got there late, but somebody got there even later. Um, one of my old mate, Alan Kings, came and beat us, which wasn't very sporting. Um, and that was great. Then didn't know where to go. The ground was soft and uh, something else. So we said we'd wait for the... I, I do think two, two mile four or five at Ascot was stretching her stamina. She's a speedy mare, as you'd saw from, say, the Christmas hurdle mm -hmm. um, when she beat Booba there. And uh, I, I think Ascot stretched her stamina as much as the soft ground. Um, then we went to the Ebor, and again, soft ground. Um, but she ran a remarkable race. Um, and you'd probably say she was pretty unlucky not to win. Um, she just, she was flying at the death. Um, she just couldn't get out when the first two got away. And, you know, it, she, she flew home, but they'd gone. Um, she'd have caught them in another 50 yards. So we ummed and about all sorts of flat races that didn't suit. So we're going back to the old jumping game.